Greetings, in the name of the Most High. Yes, there will come a time. My cats are not completely happy this morning. Okay, that's enough of that. Oh, not nazzy, come on. Okay. Well, I had to share some thoughts. And uh, the House of Israel was divided, I'd say most of the time, just as we are divided most of the time, as people are divided most of the time. If you read the Old Testament, it's just a story of grace, blessing, punishment, you know, disobedience, punishment. It seemed like nobody could just stay on the right course um, indefinitely. It would always shift to something awful and negative. God would have to intervene. It's because they were bad actors, doing bad things, getting people to rebel along with them against the ways of God, and he would end their plight. He would also bring down civilization, such as evil and corrupt Roman Empire um, and the various other empires of the world, both in Asia, in the East and the West. Man has had the same problem because it's not him collectively divided, it's not good people over there, bad people over here. It's that each person has the division within them, has the split within them. And uh, call it the fall of man. Um, just as, say, in the book of Acts, they seem to be getting along for a while as a collective. Of course, you know, you hold your breath not too far into the book of Acts, you find that um, there are people um, having their own ideas, their own divisions, just the same way they did in the wilderness with Moses. And people end up, you know, dying for the good of the, of the whole, but in, in a sense, the whole thing gets scattered and split. Some people say along the lines of uh, Peter and Paul, who was Saul, but I'm sure both of these guys had not much in common, save for the Lord, but that wasn't enough. But yet the church went on anyway, and the people went on anyway. And the situation goes on anyway. Um, the Jesus was as, as much a deliverer of the oppressors It's really, really, I've had a lot of things on my mind, including, um, you know, I've had some requests for a communion and all those communions that we did that were live on WWCR were done as a recording. So there's, you know, I'm a firm believer in these recordings as being eternal and timeless. And they can be listened to again, and certainly we will do it again. But there's been the encouragement that each of us will take communion uh, of our own. And, uh, oh, I see why you're mad. Because you want to get in my room, okay? In my studio room. So I'm kind of in wandering, walking mode. So in this collective, we cannot agree. You know, in our communities, we cannot agree. In our families, we cannot agree. So much so that Jesus said, if you don't hate your mother and father, your, you know, your aunt and uncle, and your, your situation, your life, in general, sucks. 
And if it's not that way for you, you can't be my disciple. Well, because what are you saying there? Is not your particular kind of person that has these feelings of division and hatred. Uh, because you're a fallen human being, uh, you know, Jesus came for you. You know, there is not anyone that do, does not, from time to time, not hate their parents, hate their life, hate their job, hate their situation, hate their kids, hate their wives, hate their husbands, hate their whatever, uh, and even cursing them. There's, and that qualifies you as a burdened person on earth who, with a heart for God, can at least start making it better by going that direction. The world will not hear this, though, because, unfortunately, they have all gone, um, not their own way, but they've all gone the way of the world. They've tried to cover that up by being in the churches, going to church, you know, going to their religious ceremonies, going to counseling, going to therapy, trying to make it better. But really, the whole thing is, and what, why these tragedies happen like the... Um, Connecticut shooting and, 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 and well, we're going to get into that because I know exactly why that happened. And, and it's, uh, it's the same, but hold on. So most people being honest actors are not going to, um, paint their lives with rose-colored glasses. What they're going to do is tell you that, you know, it's been a struggle. And even under the best of times, when there's prosperity, when there's, um, you know, happiness should be reigning, when when looks like our troubles are over, they're not because then there's health, you know, there's wealth, there's uh, interpersonal relations, there's... Um, I find that no matter how, no matter whether I uh, a base or a bound, as Paul says, the same burden is there. You're going to die. Um, people hate themselves and hate each other, making for misery everywhere. You know, blaming the other group, blaming the other person over here, over there. Uh, that if they weren't around, I mean, this is a classic, you know, communist thing. But if these individualists weren't there our collective could su succeed and it can't succeed unless we get rid of them, meaning we purge them. So you have um, communists have collectively killed, I don't know, 200, 250 million people in the name of so we can just get along. But in order to get along, they'd have to kill themselves because the same division, the same thing they're complaining about is within themselves. Or if we could just ban guns or we could just do this or just do that, then our troubles would be over. If we could just save Social Security, then our troubles would be over. And of course, this is all f a fool's game. Well, we tried to stave back communism, but, you know, you can't do it because the fix is in, and there's a great deal of sorcery and power, and the Lord has spoken, and he said, this um, nation will be killed that we're in, in America, and the people here replaced with the Chinese and other or other foreigners or whatever that's... You know, the way it's, um, or at least the people will be made to bow down to the Chinese. And so they will be teaching Chinese and uh, more and more Chinese will come here and eventually replace the Americans. And it's the same thing that happened in Israel in the Babylonian captivity. Foreigners occupied Israel and took over the, the houses and some magnificent houses, but took them over and lived in them and took the spoil. And... Um, as the Babylonians conquered. And this is uh, identically what will happen here. The, the, uh, the idea that Americans will wake up, I mean, there's the, the youth has a place. I suppose not everyone is going to be killed. The youth has a place. But what these collectivists don't understand is you can kill everyone on earth, and if there's still a human being around, then the same problem, the same issue why you killed them will still be in you. So you'd have to kill yourself as well. And um, God won't let you do it. He will allow the punishment of the um, destruction of America for the rebellion of the, of, the, of the reprobate people here, of the people who have 
uh, forsaken the very reason that uh, they were blessed. There was a lot of prayer. There was a lot of uh, a lot of God around, despite you know the symbols in Washington and the Masonic influence. Despite that, there was a lot of God around, a lot of good. And um, now uh, it's going to go to pain, and the people who will suffer and scream the most are going to be the people who voted the most and were allowed the most or marched the most for this now world order that they have in this country. They will be the first to complain. They will be the first to then blame it on other people if it doesn't go well. Anyway, um, it's because they have relied on Satan for provision. It's really simple. The churches were also corrupted by the same thing. That's why they're ineffective. And I stand on, you know, on the proof I have is simply look at America today and you can see that the church has failed. Every church, every denomination failed completely, utterly, and totally. And it's a, you'd be a fool to think that they didn't. And so what I predicted would happen, I mean, this should be I told you so dot com because what I predicted had would happen because we saw what was in, involved in um, and the reason I mentioned the church is because God's punishment for these people is bigger than for Adolf Hitler because these people took um, the young away. And if you read Matthew eighteen six, um, you'll see that it says that uh, anyone who turns these youth away, um, these little children away from me that would otherwise be mine, uh, it would be better for you that you had a millstone thrown around your neck and you were drowned at the bottom of the sea. That's exactly what's going to happen to every, um, to the pastors, to the, you know, to the people that, you know, look so squeaky clean on the outside and say they come in the name of Jesus. I wouldn't want to be them. They're going to burn like nobody burns. And that how they can double down on it today, not only are they, are they most of them possessed, but they're going to double down on it in the last days. Certainly, this will be the last days here. They're going to double down on it, and they, they may even be the, the, the place that, that uh, emphasizes turning your guns in, getting your cans of food, and, 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 taking, and, and being a place where you can get your mark of the beast. I, I wouldn't surprise me at all if the commercial 501c3 churches engaged completely in that sort of activity. In fact, it would be per, it'd be the most honest thing they could do since that's who they serve. Let's just be honest about it. Talked about it for 12 years here, or however long, 10 and a half years. And um, now we have a huge confirm because the nation itself is about to go and the world into darkness economically, complete collapse, World War III, and uh, the people who are cheering this all on are going to be in food lines, not food stamps, food lines. The food stamps will be pulled. I'm just going to keep doubling down. I'm just going to tell you. I'm just going to make these predictions, and you can just deal with them. They will be pulled. It'll be the same thing as in, in, in uh, Soviet Union. Uh, the, the, the shelves will be bare in the stores. Those that are open, the government collectives. People will be in trouble for hoarding. There'll be people that get on that pad. Get on there, Molly. Get on that pad. Get on there. Okay. People will be in trouble for hor- Get Sit. Stay there. Good girl. Okay. Because I'm not getting up right now to get lay you out. It's only like five degrees out there. But the people that uh, have, like I say, cheered all this on, when they pull the entitlements, um, they will do so after they get what they want. They did the same thing everywhere else in the world. They get what they want. There's no more need to give you perks. When you give Satan what he wants, your soul, you no longer get to be the rock star, right? You go down in status unless you start you know, killing people and, uh, or doing dirty work or whatever. But bottom line is... Um, they will have to, you know, in the name of, and, and, and there's no end to what they'll do. I mean, obviously, when the ship is sinking, they'll, 
They'll try to confiscate wealth, confiscate property, have bass auctions, um, probably confiscate gold, confiscate bank accounts, 401ks. I don't think there's any, any limit to what these evil bastards will do. And then finally, it's just that you're the problem. We need to confiscate you or just take your children and kill you. I mean, this has been what tyranny has looked like from the beginning of time. So I'm not saying anything anyone doesn't know. And certainly anyone who's in the prophecy realm has predicted such things because of man's disobedience globally. Mystery Babylon has to be America because it's in Bible prophecy. There's no mention of it. There's Mystery Babylon, but there's no mention of the most powerful country on earth, which unless Mystery Babylon is, 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 is referring to it. Um, you had the situation of the guns, for example, as we said, that no one would challenge King Barak and, you know, that he, he fits this description in Daniel and he fulfills more of that description as time goes on. And uh, we had Hurricane Sandy, the magical hurricane, the sorcery hurricane that came to save the election. Then we had Sandy, the school shooting. So there's this Sandy meme kind of going along. And all this is going on in the spirit. And no, the, these people don't need to go pick up the, like that kid that shot all the children than himself. They don't need to go pick him up and put him in a room and mind control him like, like, like the Manchurian candidate or like uh, Jason Bourne. They don't have to do that. Um, you know, it's just, it's just things like this happen. And they're going to continue to happen until there's a complete confiscation of guns. Oh, yes, they do pick up people and take care of it and psychiatrists funnel them into the military industrial complex and they do mind control them and get them to go out and shoot a bunch of people and, you know, in order to advance the agenda. But now, of course, Obama, just like it fell in his lap with Sandy, it falls in his lap again with Sandy. Sandy and Sandy falling into his lap once again. And I'm sitting here going, too bad people don't understand the magical realms, the power that's, that's being displayed here. I asked the Lord, is, is, is Barack Obama possessed by Satan? And the answer is yes. You know, maybe he doesn't look like it now. Now he's growing into it, isn't he? Um, and that doesn't mean he won't be dispossessed. I mean, what it means is that the power centering around this man, his agenda, and the things he's able to do, no man can stop. Congress, uh, you have basically the saddest thing you'll ever see is a guy like John Boehner standing there um, humiliating himself and embarrassing himself in front of the whole world and being kind of like almost tar and feathered and being and sitting there being punished you know by the people that he's going to acquiesce to but making a public a public humiliation scene out of him first these people are intent and he's going to still bend over and do what he's told he will be seen forever as um, just a just, just a, a waste of a human being. No morals, no principles, no honor. And he's being dishonored and defiled and basically raped in front of the whole world by Obama and no one can do anything about it. And he, he says, okay, I'll bend over a little more. I mean, at least, man, have some, have some dignity. At least have some dignity. And I, I don't know what's going to happen to him. Probably he'll just become an alcoholic and go die. I, have no, I can't imagine how you would live with yourself being him, having um, given into something that he knows and, and the Congress knows for a fact that this is not about taxing the rich which pays for about one week. There is no, uh, th this is punishment. This is, and, and it doesn't stop here. It's watch them do the same thing with gun confiscation. First, there'll be a ban on assault weapons, you know. And if you watch the show Preppers, you see that they're training with assault weapons. They're just basically, they're semi-automatic rifles that hold, some of which hold 50 caliber rounds. Uh, they're training so when because when the day of uh, 
the zombies comes, the wandering um, gangs of, of Hungary, they'll be ready. They're, they're preparing to fight it out. It's the most popular show that uh, Nat Geo has ever done. And I'm, a, I'm kind, of a, kind of a fan of it. I, I'm, not, I'm not a prepper myself, but I watched this one guy spend $40,000 on dried food and stuff his garage with it. And I'm like, yeah, that's, uh, you know, yeah, we, I guess we ought to be doing that. But, you know, and then training with uh, semi-automatic weapons. And then, uh, and then there was a guy who even bought himself a helicopter because he said the robes would be jammed so he can get out. And then there was a there was a, a you know a Jewish guy that you know is really a, a Orthodox Jew who's totally you know you see him praying and and um, you know uh, going through his stuff. But then as a community leader in in, in Philadelphia or wherever he is, um, he's he's teaching people to prepare for these uh, for terrorist attacks. And I would tell that that man yeah, that he's absolutely right. These terror attacks are coming. Just like the school shootings, you, the, the, the shootings are turned up more and more and more and more. All orchestrated, 100%, um, I mean, made to look completely real, like the Aurora, Colorado thing. Of course, that was completely a psyop uh, from the military, from your friends of the military, who are down with the global communist plan. The, the U.S. military... The CIA, the FBI, everyone is down with the way things are going to get it done. What they need to do now is get rid of Israel and America. In other words, all the people of Jesus and the people of Yahweh, the Jews and the Christians, are the ones targeted for defeat. That's where Islam comes in. That's why communism and Islam are such good friends. Because it's not about getting rid of God. It's about getting rid of the, the, the root, the thing that God created. Along with it is the, the destruction of the genome, the creation genome that God made, and the destruction of everything on the earth and the, and the advent of human misery on a scale no one has ever seen before. But luckily, the days are short in the sense that this doesn't go on 100 years because the people couldn't withstand it. The human misery to be brought on will also then be blamed on eventually, well, it'll be the, 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 the Christian, the people that are resisting, the people that are not getting it. They're not getting with the program. Just recently um, in the military, there was a, uh, um, a paper, a circular that went around that said, you can't bring up the word pedophilia because the Islamics do are pedophiles. And uh, of course, everyone knows that, Right. When you go to like like you know, there's lots of gay people throughout the years who've and you know who run to Morocco for the boys. I mean, don't, you, you understand that, right? That's been a common thing from the beginning and very well known all over the world. That if you want man boy sex, you go to Morocco and you can have all the boys you want, ten, twelve, whatever, doesn't matter. Just like you know, people go to Thailand for underage um, girls, let's say. Uh, pedophilia is the one of the principal hallmarks of communism, uh, collectivism, uh, you know, man worship, but really it's the satanic. In the satanic realm, one of the very high, um, you, you know, the, the you know, do under do what thou wilt is sex with children, and sex with children is um, will absolutely be legal. I mean, maybe it'll take, all this may take time. I mean, it'd be great if it's wrapped up to a close, but all this is, is, you know, what I left off with saying last time is that time is kind of a circular thing and it's kind of floating in a bubble of eternity. And there's a process here that, that is here like a factory for people to go through and become, you know, go through a certain process on the way to another process. So it will be 80%, 90% evil here um, and the people think they've discovered something when they go evil and they go to the other side. They're like, ooh, I found, I found a way to live. It's like, no, you idiot. You went the same way the generations and generations before you went. But God seems content with harvesting his remnant each generation. So in a sense, it never ends. And in a sense, it's, it's brought to an end. And, um, hey, I'm busy, Eli. 
I'm not sure that, you know, I was kind of like, you know, I'm not sure the Lord even wants me to continue with this broadcast because I think we're at a time, you know, obviously that, uh, and I've tried to express all these things in so many ways, musically, and I'm going to do theatrically and, and more of that coming up. And uh, theatrically meaning, you know, theatrical radio, theatrical sound bites, and then, you know, speaking in a manner that is filled by the Spirit. And trying to get, uh, convey to you what the Lord is saying. This is just outrageous that I have to go through this with you, with you people, that you won't let me be. But it's cool. I don't have to speak on the air, and I don't have to. I don't have to do this anymore. I'm doing this kind of. This one is a courtesy. My Podbean account has expired. I'm not sure if I can get it to be re-upped. Um, on the other hand, uh, I'm going to do some outrageous things. I'm not interested in this linear talk we're having right now. Because you know what? We've had this discussion. Every prophetic site with gloom and doom, they're talking about the same thing. News media is talking about the same thing unless you're liberals, then you're talking about how great the Obama administration is and the new world is. And what a great time being global citizens you're having. But the bottom line is, when it comes time for your destruction, which is absolutely nigh, you will blame people that didn't go along with you. You'll blame somebody else all the way into death because the, 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 the dragon owns your soul. You have no rights. You didn't have any rights before Obama came in or anyone like that, before the geopolitical winds changed to global communism. You didn't have any rights. You already sold your soul. You're already in a hierarchy. You already had to, in a military structure where you had to do what you were told. So therefore, this is perfect for you. You didn't have to change. There is no meet the new boss, same as the old boss. You already were in this structure originally. I'm talking about collectivists, Satanists, conformists, whatever. All of you are the same. You've all passed the other side. You all uh, breathe in and out based on the collective. Your job, your career paths, everything you have comes from that same collective that you bow down to. You laugh and laugh and laugh at the disconnected people who are not part of this collective and try to demonize them and make them be the, you know, the, 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 you know if you could just get rid of them, then you could have your nice little collective. Wrong. You yourself are going to have to look in the mirror and realize you came into this world alone and you go out of this world alone. You come in as an individual and you leave as an individual. Uh, what does that tell you? You're not a collective. We are not one. We never will be the same. None of us is ever going to be the same. God made each one of us unique in his own way for his own plan. And by abrogating that, you, you know, by going passing through the other side, you become the twice dead. And the Lord just, you know, you're the ones who are cannon fodder. And, you know, maybe now is the time where he brings time to an end. So he does it by getting rid of all of you. It's not me who gets rid of all of you. The me who warns you that if you have anything left in you, you know, you could realize that you're a prodigal son or daughter. You can come back. But you say, come back to us. And, I, and it's like, us, you don't have a source. You're not God. You have nothing to offer anyone. You, you don't even have enough for yourselves right now. Don't you understand that? You don't have anything to come back to. That was all a lie. You know, whether, whether you, you, know, you agreed with your rock stars with their dumb lyrics or anybody else, 
It was all a lie. And now it's coming right to the crunch time. So what do we, what do we say? Uh, no, what was the solution? The solution was, you know, revering the creator and seeking the truth in him, seeking the truth, which is him. That would have staved all this off, obviously. Um, but like I said, they won't matter. All the way unto death, they will blame other people for every single thing that they don't like that happens to them. It will be someone else's fault. It will never be their fault or, their, or anything in their collective's fault. They will say they're right, you're wrong, and they will go unto death, the fools of fools of fools. I know how they've laughed at you as, as a fool. You that's on the path of Christ, you know, for real, which mean, meant, which really means you couldn't participate in churches. You couldn't participate in religion at all. <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't, um, uh, I'm sorry. You couldn't, um, catch a break with your employment. You're considered the odd man out because you're not going to, uh, give, uh, uh, a causeway to sin. Um, hated. The one who's ruining the party. The one who's um, being obstinate. You know, you're connected to God, but not anyone else. So, you you know, as you've been called out more and more, they've gotten more and more mad at you because you're less and less of a of a party or whatever you were with them, whatever kind of thing you had going with the uh, collective, with the world. They present to you the ultimatum, which is basically um, you play ball with us or you don't play ball. Um, So therefore you're sort of like a refugee or on the lamb or whatever trying to get your way through this world. You may be just getting the same harassment for being a conservative today. You may have been a part of the collective. You may have been through to the other side. You may have been welcome in all the clubs, but suddenly you're finding yourselves on the outs because it doesn't work anymore. The people that were selling that the most, they all became drunks. They all became regretful drunks. Now they're all crying in their beer going, oh my God, it's all over. So they're realizing the error of their ways, and they're saying, oh my God, what have we done? What have we done to our kids to have them, you know, inherit this and embrace it? Well, what you did was you created universities and hoops for them to jump through, and they agreed, and they jumped through those hoops so they could have uh, the same life you had. Now they realize they just lost their souls And they have nothing, and they're empty, and they're out there wandering. So if some of these become violent, it's because they're not grounded in God. I mean, obviously, I know a lot of people that are suffering with the Lord, but they just continue to, 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 you know, trust in him for, for the direction. And that's the good thing. These are people of courage, and they're not going to go back to, uh, their 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 schools or their fraternities or their or their collective groups or their um you know their high school reunions and 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 um talk about how great it was being cool and being the first kid to get laid and you know be the rock star or whatever they're not going to do that they're going to keep having to push in because times are really serious now and um you know it seems like every week there's some episode some event staged by um, the tyrannical globalist government, whatever you know, the the you know the the the, the Luciferians that brings us um, uh, further and further laws. Like for example, Obama will take the nukes down to three hundred because he is listening to what uh, China and Russia are telling him since he's basically Russian or Chinese. He isn't really an American, so he's going to try to take the nukes to zero if he can. 
Whereas the Russians still have, you know, they say 1,500, but I think they have more like 5,000 pointing at us for, you know, when the day, when that day happens, so there won't be retaliation. So it's going to be like shooting fish in a barrel. The Americans are gone. Maybe they'll use the neutron bomb and then repopulate with the Russians and the Chinese, whatever. The Mexicans, the Russians, the, the South Americans, the, you know, any, anything but here, any country but here. And um, so the idea of disarming the population has been, a, they've been salivating over this for, you know, decades because they know they have to disarm the population here and in Israel in order to get what they want. And they have to disarm the nukes and disarm the military in order so that, you know, and then eventually they got to show you the iron fist and say, your rulers, your overlords are the Chinese and the Russians, the, the communist collective. They own you and they will tell you what to do. If you want to eat, you know, you'll do that. But it's fused with this whole spiritual thing of, you know, you know, the, 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 the whole uh, idea of the beast and the worship of the beast, which worship can mean just abiding in the beast is worship that you will participate in the collective, do what you're told, take the microchip, which I, you know, I've, I've believed and others have believed is a, is a DNA changer because that would fulfill the, uh, the, the fact that you would be written out of the Lamb's Book of Life, meaning you would no longer be that human being that was made, right? The Book of Life is DNA. So you no longer be of the same DNA. Very simple as Revelation 13. You should know that. You know, you should know that that uh, chapter. You should know that book. And uh, in so doing, would fulfill that prophecy and would make the great majority of people unacceptable to God. And, and you know, so less and less are acceptable to God. And, you know, it's it's the big game of chicken, I suppose, in the end. But it all has to do ultimately with the spirit. So... All of them are possessed with a certain spirit that's, you know, disarm, get rid of the nukes, you know, kumbaya. And they're fools off the cliff where the controllers and the handlers who are staunch KGB, you know, Chinese communists, you know, that, that are owned and operated by those collectives um, are going to tell you how wonderful it is to disarm you, how wonderful it is to have a nuclear free world. How wonderful it is to confiscate all the public land so that we can, we can preserve them for future generations. How wonderful it is to confiscate all the guns so we can have safety in our streets. And, um, you know, we talked for the last three or four years about the checkpoints, interstate checkpoints. You know, the same as in, in East Germany during the Cold War. Your papers, please. Uh, same thing. It's all, um, Stalin used to, um, put microphones in all the trees. And now, uh, we have reports of microphones being put, high technology mics being now put everywhere so that conversations can now be heard. Exactly what Stalin did. It is the exact same paradigm. Satanism, collectivism, conformity. Pass through to the other side, spiritual Satanism, secularism, humanism, globalism, communism, all equal and all the same thing. So funny that uh, usually communists, of course, they, they hate religion, but when it comes to Islam, they, they give it a pass. And they're now the military, who are being obviously operated by the KGB, is being told to um, not say anything about pedophilia uh, in Islamic countries, because that's the custom there. So in their new instruction manual, the uh, regular soldiers are being told to keep their lips buttoned up about that. So sort of like, don't ask, don't tell. Well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out, you know, don't ask, don't tell is over. So the pedophilia thing will be over. And that's what they're inching toward because that's, then that goes to give us your children when they're young. And of course, for saving them, that they must put out and be part of the system and realize they are, they're a very high, highly coveted commodity. And they must acquiesce to the adults that will teach them and lead them into good positions, but they must 
give up this idea that they're going to be innocent. They have to be used sexually in order to be moved up the ladder or to be put into the system, in order to be made into cold, whatever it is, very cold, um, sort of Nazi-esque uh, interrogators and torturers. It will help if they've you know, all been sodomized when they're five years old. As a legal uh, type of trauma that has to do with also shaping minds and shaping destinies. And all this, they're just, they can't wait to get their hands on this kind of thing. These are the people that you, America, have trusted. And not to mention the whole mafia aspect of it all. These are the people that are your, your you know, not across the board, not completely, but in general, these are the people that control America, that control the churches. And the churches will be the greatest aid to the advent of the new... They're they're all going to say, you better just... They're going to start retraining people um, at at the church level because they've been... The pastors have all been briefed now what to say and how to lead them into the new global order. So they will be not resisting it as the Bible instructs to do. The Bible says, you know, come out of her, be separate. So you're not partakers with the plagues to be visited upon Mystery Babylon. But they don't believe in those prophecies. They believe that this is the power now and we have to conform to that. Just like we did before to the same collective behind the scenes. This will be, of course, more overt. But, you know, it's the same basic dynamic they already learned when they were children. So now what do you say? I suppose we should have this conversation in, in, in a couple of years when, you know, when you're facing your own death. And, and then, and I will say to you then, so now what do you think? Do you think I might have been right? Are you finally willing to say that it doesn't pay? The answer to that, friends, is sad. They, due to pride, will not recant or repent. They will say, I'm as much with Jesus as you are. How dare you tell me that? Even to their dying moment. And I don't know why they they have to win. But there's nothing to win here on earth. People are going to die. Times have changed. People are still going to die from whatever causes. People are going to live and live their lives and die. They're going to pledge allegiance to something and that may become their God. But they're still going to die. And again, wealth is not going to be given out to people in the new world um, if they already have their way. That will be for their cronies and for the people that, uh, you know, are at the top. It won't be for the, for the average uh, rank and file. But again, you know, it won't matter to me. I'm, I, mean, I just, you know, we'll, we'll, I, I look at this and I just think, you know, history repeats. And how can people, um, no matter how much you repeat the truth to them, they just want to keep blaming someone else or blaming you because you tell the truth or blaming somebody else over here or blaming, um, you know, that, that if you're not part of their precious collective, which is, on, which is unto death, which has failed and which will fail to provide adequate, um, I can't, can't do it here, Trish which will fail to provide adequate um, uh, provision. And they will say that provision would be doubly increased if these people weren't here or those people. And it's been the same. Look, before it was the Jews. Can't you remember that far back in history? The Jews were the holdouts. They weren't going to become Gentiles. So they were targeted. They weren't going to conform. And they weren't going to be part of the, of, of the culture of what was going on. They were going to be in business and they were going to be successful. And then, and then whatever happened, uh, the fact that they were in business, the fact they were successful, uh, they got seen as a contest that the Jews are taking over. They're taking over all the, uh, uh, the, 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 the resources in Germany. 
So we got to kill them all. It's that same mentality that will target one group and they'll target another group and they'll target another group. And I wouldn't be surprised if... You have to understand, the people that are, that are saying racism now are the racists and they actually want to target people of color. I think I mentioned this to you, that the hierarchy, you know, is racist and the blacks browns, yellows, whatever other color of skin um, who support these guys don't know that the plan is in to kill the Africans, kill the Chinese, kill whatever, anything that's not them. And uh, so what are you going to do? I hope that Well, here's what I've noticed. I've also noticed people that have been kind of tried and true, you know, on the path of uh, the right path, you know, with the Lord, who have gotten tired of being alone. And they have now, some of them are joining these little collectives here and there of spiritual ministry and uh, feeling they can go out and make a difference if they join up and work within the system. Uh, I, I'm here to tell you that not only will not work, that will be a disaster. If you've been called out of the system, you don't go back into the system to start because your logic tells you you could do more good there. It's it's not about you. It's not about your logic. The fact is the Lord preserved you or brought you out of there for a reason for himself that you don't need to know right now. Um, but nonetheless, uh, they are uh, going the way of failure. And um, all in the name of serving God. And I'm sorry to, to say that, you know, I, like I said, I didn't put my faith in uh, humans. I put my faith in him. And as we interact and we have our time together, you know, and we have our emails and our fellowship on Facebook and our, you know, getting together for meals every once in a while and, and you know, sharing the Lord. And as these things happen, um, you know, we, we kind of, you know, give thanks that we can have moments like that, but, you know, realize that the way that you think, I mean, for example, I could tell you how to solve the gun issue and these shooters like this, this crazy kid that, you know, shoots the school up. The, the best thing to do is arm the teachers and train them, especially train them. So when something, something like this, and let everyone know that that school is heavily armed, and I don't think you'd see another problem there. But they're going to do the opposite because they want, they, Obama and company and the rest of them, want to see lots of these shootings so they can crack down and start, you know, getting into people's homes and their heads and their minds. Pre-crime is also something that Homeland Security is now dealing with. They, um, they would like to, through surveillance, try to find out which people will do certain things and intervene before they do them. So the science of pre-crime, as we saw in, on the, the movie with Tom Cruise, is becoming a, an absolute reality. And all of this is, is, is far beyond anything the Soviet Union ever had far beyond anything China ever had. It is so invasive that they want, like I say, to change your DNA with a chip using nanotechnology to corrupt and pollute you. Um, I don't think there's any end to the evil these people are doing, and that it would be, yes, the governments of the world. Not just the United States government, but the, you know, the mystery Babylon government of the world. And, uh, there's no end to what they will do to a human being. For them, life is cheap, and uh, it's all for the greater good. So, and they're so deluded, it's unbelievable. I look at, uh, I look at the actors, the players in this, and they're so deluded, and they're so possessed by demons. There is no talking to them. They're just going to go ahead and go. They want to make sure everyone's disarmed in America, so they can't defend themselves against them. And yes, eventually they want to get into your homes. They want to get your children, get inside your heads, inside your minds, 
to decide which one should live and which one shouldn't. You don't think it could happen again like it did in Nazi Germany, in Stalinist Russia, in mainland China? You don't, you don't think um, they kill hundreds of millions of people? This time probably billions. You don't think World War III is going to be staged for the purpose of depopulation so they can manage the population better and get this, uh, this regime in? And you don't think these people are all Satanists who are doing it? Well, then you're the most naive, ill-informed, mind-controlled, and completely useless. Um, you know, I don't know how you would get that way unless you had joined a long time ago and are resigned to it and tried to put a good face on it. There is no good face on it. But, you know, the one thing I liked about the movie Red Dawn, I liked a lot of things about it, but the one thing I liked about Red Dawn was, you know, the, the Russians invaded the East, the North Koreans invaded the West. And when they had a political rally, um, you know, to, to get everybody in, in other words, these kids who rebelled, they were labeled terrorists, and their parents who then went along with the new regime uh, they were the most pathetic sight in the world, and they were talking about how, you know, we're all, all you victims of capitalism, we're going to help you. And these terrorists out there, we got to get them, you have to turn them in. And it's just like we would talk about terror. In other words, these guys that became terrorists fighting for freedom, the, the people that were, were in power and giving speeches, they look like this government today. And I think that was done intentionally and it was very well done because it's, it's, the government today is not American. And they got Boehner. They get, they're getting them all. They're, they wanna, what they want to do is they want to humiliate them publicly so that, like Boehner is being humiliated publicly, so that people never go that way again. There's only one party. That's the left. And communism is the left. There's only one part, and that's, that's what they're going to do. Now, let's look in the deeper spiritual side of this and also the, the magic of Sandy and Sandy and how the planks, these planks are getting put forth one at a time through magical means and through supernatural means. So there is a huge spiritual dimension to this. But, of course, they don't talk about it. It's nod and wink like I'm, I'm, I'm down, you know. And that's how they sort of get along with each other. But eventually they're going to bring that out to the surface. People will literally physically bow down to the beast or be executed. And this is all prophesied in the Bible, Book of Revelation, Old Testament, New Testament, Matthew 24, Isaiah dotted throughout the whole thing. And this is also about the, the return, ultimately, of the Messiah, who comes as a king of kings and lord of lords, who will rule over this situation. It will be overturned. A lot of the people of God, and I'm not talking about the collectivists in their prisons called churches. I'm talking about the people who have fought the good fight and who have moved on beyond the mind control of the churches, beyond the mind control of politics, beyond the mind control of all this stuff. And they're just seeking the Lord peacefully. And of course, you know, you'll be targeted and tested, tried. You know, that you, God will be using them to try your faith. But they really believe, um, you know, the people that have really kind of, like I say, stayed the course, they're going to be uh, rewarded because all they did was stand for goodness and truth. But the collectivists want you to bow down through corrupting yourself in front of them so that they can you know, have something on you and so they can then take you in and trust you. You know, this is the old mafia tactic. And uh, basically nobody gets away alive. You know, nobody gets away without that self-corrupting ritual that will bring them into the uh, agreement. So a guy like Boehner, you know, these guys all had those covenants and oaths. So Boehner has to agree to be humiliated. That's you go, well, why is he agreeing to put up with it? Because he's part of a secret society, that's why. And so, you know, he has to allow himself, as one of the rights that he's going through right now, 
to be publicly humiliated um, with the idea that he will have a place in the new society later on and that his children and grandchildren will be taken care of. And he feels that that is a a good price to pay, that he will pay with his soul, and so that his kids and grandkids can grow up happy. (laughs) And so he won't be hurt, because if he stands up against the beast, he'll be hurt. He's already given up. He thinks Obama is like the hand of God. And he will, uh, if you watch him, it's just really interesting. Rather than just getting mad at him or mad at any politician, if you watch the way they dance, this is all like theater and dance. It tells you kind of like where this is all headed. It it shows you that Boehner and Obama are two sides of the same coin. And Boehner's humiliation is theater. He's not taking it personally. He's playing a role in getting this thing done for the team. Um, the humiliation is for others so they understand don't rebel or this could happen to you. And that's basically it. And then Obama gets to be all smiles and run around and glad hand people and all that when he knows exactly what he's doing and he knows exactly that the people he's glad handing are going to be shaft given the shaft. And he's he's doing it knowing he's going to put um, you know the nail in their coffin and uh, set them down the river. He knows it. And I have warned people from the very beginning that this was going on, only, only to be thwarted. And then, of course, there's the holier-than-thou people that, you know, they're be above and beyond countries. It's like, well, why even come to the world then? You should just be gone. You shouldn't even be here. Being in and of it for you means being in your own mind superior. But that's another conversation. There's no end to the corruption of the church. No end to the uh, the sad irony that the the biggest Satanists are the, the biggest, have the biggest front of Jesus. It's just the most awful thing to try to have to put up with that. And, um, I just wonder why I have been brought into all the knowledge of all this for from for for so many years now. I, I you know, and I don't want to repeat what I've said before. I don't know that's the end of the truth right there. What I said is the whole. That's all of it. I mean, you can tune into Alex Jones who will repeat what I said, or other people giving prophecy. They'll repeat exactly what I said. You know, with variations, but I mean basically the same theme. And um, looking at it from a spiritual perspective of where this is going, I believe that December 21st, the end of the 13th Bakhtun of the Maya, will be the advent of the fallen angels upon the earth in UFO ships. So I, I want you to watch for that. Um, it's my speculation. I'm not going to say that uh, saith the Lord or anything, but I'm telling you that one of a, a prediction I'm making that could or could not be, although most always are. I, you know, it's... I wish I was wrong, folks. I really wish I was wrong about it all. I know there's people fighting to stave this thing back, and, and you know, God bless them. I also know people that have given up, who have predicted what's going to happen, and they've been pretty accurate about things, but then they've said... They gave up. They quit, you know, they they quit fighting. If you're not here to fight for goodness and what's right, you know, you don't want to get your hands must. You don't don't want to get hands dirty or your hair must. Then what the heck good are you? You know, if you're going to sit there on your high horse and say that you're above and beyond it all, ah, keep coming back to those people. You're in for a comeuppance, my friend. You know, um, all I asked for here was, you know, if you could help us vote against communism. Didn't work. Worth a try, though, right? If I said that, ah, there's no point fighting it, they're too strong, 
I'll just sit here and give up. That's what Boehner did. That's what you're seeing the people do. And as the leaders give up, you see they're an example for the rest of us. Even if they're right that we should give up because it's too strong a force, you know, I say you should keep fighting for your freedom. You should keep standing up for what's right on principle. That is honesty, integrity, morals, God, country, principles, first principles, constitution, Bill of Rights, the, uh, the, the appropriate rule of law, that is rule of law that's not corrupted by uh, judges who go against the rule of law, and vigilance in general to keep this whole thing going. You know, that, that I, I suppose what's happening now is the, the, they're saying you must capitulate and you must let them humiliate you and indoctrinate you because it's going to go that way anyway. And I see them joining the uh, invading army rather than standing with the freedom fighters who are now labeled terrorists. But of course, this is a war on for the mind. So I would think that people would want to guard their mind, not give in. And um, so my feeling about Boehner is that he had to have been a part of a secret society of indoctrination. And he has to be doing this as theater. And he's got to be, um, you know, used at this point by them to make a point that, you know, and what it tells me is there never was a, you know, democracy going on here, a republic going on that this guy had sold out a long time ago. And maybe they all have, save for a few. You know, you had Ron Paul and a few others. But, I mean, except for that, you have uh, most of the people have sold out. They're all playing on the same team. Same with the military, same with, you know. So they say, what's well, a fait accompli. I'm not going to have anything to do with it. I'm going to wander around in the hills and look for people to baptize in the name of Jesus. It's like... But what about you? You should be baptized. You have a problem. And the problem is this romantic notion that um, there are people out there wandering around just waiting for you to baptize them in the name of Jesus. Not that it just doesn't work that way. And the people coming in to find answers now are being funneled into ministries that have tentacles and ties to uh, 501c3. So those baptisms, in my opinion, are uh, moot. Those things that go on there are um, corrupted. They're not going to be shut down in this in this time period because... Um, they're going to be a friend of the new order and the people are going to be told to conform and follow the laws of Romans 13 and obey. Keep your eyes on God. Not So what happens? Well, what happened in the last election, same thing that happened before, and they'll probably do the statistics on this, millions of evangelicals didn't vote for the capitalist. I don't care what you think about their religion or whatever. You, it was two philosophies on them. So, and now they're complaining. Complaining about this situation. But they wouldn't vote because, you see, that would be participating about whatever it was. They, so now uh, this situation turned out to be the way it went. And um, they're they're... They're complaining and suffering and will suffer all the more. And yet they were the ones who caused it. And so smug were they. I'm not going to vote for any of these. So smug were they. I don't want to hear one complaint out of them. But we're not really exactly equally yoked or brethren in that sense. You know what I'm saying? Because everyone who had a, a conscience, who had an, a, any kind of radar for God, any kind of love for God, 
would have heard loud and clear. We're in it, not of it. John 17 states that, yeah, we're one, but we're in it, not of it, connected to God, but we're in it in the sense that we, we, particip- we, we are actors here. We are supposed to act. And um, the fact that the Christians, in two elections in a row, the Christians voted for communism. They voted for communism and tyranny. Twice in a row. It will be the Christians in the end who will be seen as the ones who caused it to happen. And they were so smug addressing me. Brother Z, I think you're wrong. Um, We're not to participate in this. I'm preparing people to meet Yeshua. They all think, they all think falsely, wrongly, incredibly, that Jesus is going to come scoop them out of here. He won't. You're going to go through it. So you didn't vote. No, I understand the, 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 the choices. I mean, you know, McCain was terrible and Romney was, wasn't very good, but it was two philosophies. It was the, see, Obama represents, you know, the KGB, Russia, China, you know, that, those are his bosses. The other guy didn't. Oh, they both work for the same thing, Brother Z. It's, well, yeah, it's all one big Satan Babylon thing, okay? Well, fine, then you should just kill yourself. Then you should have been raptured already. I guess your God forsook you. Jesus tried to explain to people that the kingdom of God was within, so they would quit looking here and there for, for you know, for 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 a sign, for a, for a rescue, for something. I think also to prepare them for when he was gone, that they wouldn't keep looking out there. Oh no, I know it says look up for your redemption draweth nigh, but that's when there's great troubles. But the main thing is that looking to be rescued from a situation that you yourself helped to create. We all had a hand in this, what we see now. Being in Christ, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, does not exempt me from having, you know, from reaping what I've sown. I have helped to create this mess. I will go through it. I won't be spared, and there's going to be a lot of death, and I think the death comes from a kind of a faux World War Three type of thing, you know? An exchange of nukes, something. You know, I, I'm not sure exactly how they're going to pull it off, but they, they got their plan. In the end, it doesn't matter. You know, it'll be like, in the end, it'll be the same people doing a depopulation thing. So they're doing all these, the, the evil things, and I ask people, well, why do you think that is? Do you think that you had something to do with this? Why do you think it is that we trusted our patriots in the CIA, the uh, FBI and all that, only to find out that that they're going with the uh, the global program? That the, 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 the patriots you think about, they've been purged from the generals, the people from the military, the people in the military will fire on their own citizens if they resist giving the guns up. That's the kind of tyranny that, you know, comes from Russia or China. You know, but they will give in and bow down. And um, Red Dawn was really great at showing that. Kid's father, you know, there he is, signing up with them and having to go after his evil son out there and help the help the uh, general find him and and kill him in order to spare his own life. And that was pathetic. That he wouldn't help his son was pathetic. Was horrifying. Disgusting, despicable. Almost as bad as seeing Boehner up there being flogged and humiliated in front of people and taking it and being a part of the actual plan to renege on his um, commitment to lower taxes or whatever it was, you know, ta- taxes and I suppose, you know, the, uh, the, the Republicans who are just basically not who they were will vote for 
gun bans and the taxes and you know, not, nothing will ever be enough. The plan is to not create any new jobs, to not create any new economy, to keep it, you know, just being destroyed more and more, then confiscate more and more wealth to, to pay the bills until there's nothing left. And then they move on to another country and destroy that. I mean, they have a plan, though, a global plan. But, I mean, that's basically it. If there's any of you out there who work in these agencies, who work for these people, haven't you ever considered, um, are you really going to go all the way with this? What it is is like a game of musical chairs. And what they're all trying to do is save themselves. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're like, you can't beat Satan. It's, it's too big. You're going to have to go along to get along. And the answer in this time, when you go along to get along, it costs you your eternal soul. It's not always been like that. When they show you the chip, that, that's when you know um, that you're no longer a prodigal, but you're gone should you take that. But there's nothing much more I can say about it. I mean, it's, it is what it is. I don't know how long it can be. I don't know if it can be staved off. I understand that this evil has to mac- maximally ramp up um, before there will be a change and, and before the return of the Lord. But how will the return of the Lord be? How will God deal with this situation? You have more people hating God now than ever before and more dire circumstances than ever before. They almost they go hand in hand. Not almost, but they do. So that's why, you know, I, uh, in my music, I focus on dealing with all these issues, but from a, from a non-linear, get it in the spirit kind of way. Because um, they're not always going to want to have people <laughs> telling you, them to you know not give in to the to the spiritual and intellectual and mental system of their um, of the new way. They're going to want uh, useful idiots, and they're going to want um, dupes, and they're going to want dumbed down people, and they're not not going to want people having figured out um, the the entire plan. Which, in their minds, is the social planners and the and the uh, social engineers is basically depopulation and hybridization. Oh yeah, no, it's it's not um, what you think. It's not having human beings here being enslaved. They've had that. They've had that. What it is is a birth of a new race of hybrids under Satan, and the rest of it be damned. They just you know, they have to do it all under the color of law and make it look legal. But again, all this is in the Bible. You know, it's all there, including Nephilim, hybrids, you know, giants, uh, and everything else. But they believe through hybridization, through this new model that's coming, that the human will be able to go beyond to the stars and to have true freedom and escape God's tyranny. And God's wrath. And it's not going to happen. And, you know, it's sad that our leaders are all caught up in this. People that kids should look up to and respect are caught up in this evil. But I don't consider any more politicians to be leaders. They just seem to be saying whatever, doing whatever to get whatever it is they want without any regard for the people that they serve. And that's just basically the sad truth of what we've come to. In terms of um, violence, there will be, you know, they w- there will be school shootings until there are no more um, guns allowed. Hey, sorry, gosh, I'm tired because I, you know, I struggled, you know, all night. So I, was, I had so many things I wanted to say about, you know, the the sandy and sandy sorcery that goes on and how a kid like that would be very vulnerable and, and, and subject to mind control and de- demonic uh, possession. And, you know, the demons are you know, feeding him with this idea that, you know, to kill his mother and kill his, 
you know, that that kind of thing is, is going around, but it's all orchestrated in, in a purposeful way. The Obama and company leapt on this crisis, um, you know, on this thing. And they went, they didn't even mourn. They went right to gun control. And Obama, please, the crocodile tears, he fake cries on cue. He's such a despicable man as a human being that I don't know that, that I, I the, the people like that, I, I look at it like a con artist. I would never have him in my home or for any reason. And no, I don't care if he, if he was white, black, it doesn't really matter to me what color he is. That kind of vibe, that kind of person is, um, you know, like a psychopath, like no, feels no guilt. You know, they, he goes around droning people to death and, and he kills way more kids than, uh, than, than this kid killed. Kills way more kids every time he does a drone, then he comes back and he kills the first responders. It, you know, he, it's, it's awful. But what are we going to do, you know? That's the issue. What are we? What are we going to do? It's uh, the only freedom that we have is in the Lord, and so now we know the program. All these things are coming, and are already fulfilled. So, the only thing I could tell you going forward, I mean, in this Zephyr Fort thing, and I don't think I'm going to tell you in this way. I'm not sure if it's going to still be there, the Zephyr Fort side, because quite frankly, everything has been said. I have, there's nothing new for me to say. It's uh, other, it's like, you know, the Bible is written and there's nothing new in the Bible. It's the same Bible as it was. The same predictions and prophecies are there as they are today. The mystery about time and how it all, if this is really it, it's all going to come around or whether this is a process that keeps unfolding in this way. I don't think we're ever going to have an answer to that. So I'm not going to deal with that. But the idea is that, um, there was going to be a price to pay for the, the, the men of the world bowing down at Jezebel. There was going to be a price to pay for the, for the wives encouraging the men, their husbands, to, to bow down. Everyone thinks they found their own private shortcut, but in, in the end, it was not any shortcut. It was a recipe for disaster for the whole collective, including their children or grandchildren. There's, what can I do? I explain to them that they killed their children and they killed their grandchildren, and then they get mad. They, they, you know, or I explain to them that um, this is the way that leads to death, and they go, I go to church three times a week, and I'm in Bible study. I'm just as much a Christian as you are. What do you want me to do after that? There's nothing else I can say. That is the way it is. For so many millions of people, Jesus means going to church means religion it, it doesn't it means you know the form of religion you know it that's what makes them feel better and then the pastors are trained to give them a word that makes them feel good about their lives so they can go on with their you know with their lives and um and and do better next time you know and, and keep trying to make it a better world in all my years of being alive the world's gotten worse with every passing year it has never gotten better and, uh, hey, gosh, I really was, I mean, this was really taxing to, I mean, I'm really trying to get through this. And I think the hard thing is that, you know, I know that a lot of you that are avid listeners, a lot of times it really doesn't matter what we say, just so we're having this conversation, you know, cause we all know the same thing as we all know the same thing, right? So it's it's like, there's no need for me to repeat it. But what would I say to you? What kind of conversation would you like to have other than this? Other than in my outrage, I'd like to produce, you know, some radio theater about some absurd things. Some, some, some um, music and whatnot that just is, uh, uh, that takes it to an all new level of, of absurdity, of theater. Of, of craziness. Craziness meaning crazy, wild freedom. And I see all these people online, you know, they're all like in the DJ thing. And they're all doing their buzzsaw, this and that, and they're all kind of conforming to that. I, I just can't, I can't take it anymore. Most of them have no chance 
because people don't support music anymore. People don't support um, theater. They don't support music. Um, all the people you see on TV were selected and chosen by the Illuminati. So it's a, it's a, it's a rigged game and it's all fake. But again, people keep, you know, we all keep supporting the people that are, that are selected rather than people that have talent. And it's too bad. You know, people have talent and freedom to say what they want rather than what they're told. You'd think that we'd have a heavy duty appetite for that, but we don't. So every which way I look in the alternative community, in the alternative religion, which, you know, the alternative spirituality, I'm not seeing a lot of hope there either. I'm seeing, you know, people that were honchos of that and, and, and leaders back after 9-11. I see them drifting back into conformed 501c3 type ministries. You know, with their their uh, preaching and their program, their Bible study and their donation buttons. You will know them by their donation buttons. Uh, now, I'll, I'll keep talking to you. I'm, I'm just um, a little bit overwhelmed with um, how rapidly this is going and how people just seem to be fine. And I'm like, uh, really? You're really fine with pedophilia? You're really fine with... Um, gun confiscation, you're really fine with losing all your freedom, you're really fine with lo losing all your houses and your, okay, well then I guess you, you're fine. You'll be fine with dying too. Well, then it's all fine, then it's all going to be fun for you. Well, then there's no point to even listen to this. If it's all so much fun, go out and have fun. Maybe you can like self-mutilate, you know, for a while first and then really kind of get into the spirit of being flogged, you could go take John Boehner's place and, you know, I'm sure Obama will love to flog you and you can be flogged and confess your sin. You know, the communists all love to have people come in and give confessions. Oh, can you imagine? I was a Jesus freak and I was preaching the word and, and I, yeah, I was preaching the word and, you know, I was telling people to stand up as individuals and stand up against the corruption and stand up against the the, the commercialized churches and everybody else has got a vested stake and interest in corporatizing the whole world and making it into this big collective sewer. And I, I'm i sorry I didn't see the wisdom because people have got to get together to solve problems and we're all one. And I created division where there didn't need to be because we're all God's creatures in the end. And now I see the light and now I just want to really you know, get on the team and be a team player. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, I want to get on the team and be a team player. And this is my confession. I, I was selfish and wrong. And now I I've see the greater good of humanity I see a shining dawn coming and I want us all to be one and all connected. And, you know, we, it takes a village to raise the children and we're going to be just this beautiful collective like a James Cameron nightmare and it will all be lovely and I will conform in every which way you can have my um, whatever it is you want. All for you, Damien. I mean, all for you, collective, all for you, big mother tree, mother nature, Gaia. I give it all to you. I give it all to everybody. I just give everything to everybody. And everything is everything. And so we're so happy. Too bad all people can learn how to be like this. Mm -hmm. Because I see so many things I never saw before. I feel so much love that I never felt before. And it's so nice being accepted and having work and having the approval of my peers. I just can't even imagine uh, it being different. <laughs> and those people, those people that are resisting, we should just get rid of them, all for the greater good, so we could live on 
and not ever go back to those times of the past, but rather forward, forward to the new dawn, to the new day, to the new day where we as a people will rise up and take our place in the universe. Amen and amen. And all you pastors, come on, sing the praises with me. Lucifer is my God and there is no other. There you go. Sing the praises. Hybridization is really creation. Yeah, sing the praises. We're going to go to the stars and beyond, a thousand points of light. Sing the praises. And we're going to get rid of the Jews and the blacks and everybody else. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't realize that communism was an Anglo thing? A Caucasian thing? Yeah. Well, they have that, but they don't tell you that. So I don't know what the Chinese are going to do. Maybe they're going to battle it out with the Caucasians for supremacy of race, race supremacy. How how genius does that make them? Race supremacy? You get over there, Molly, and be a good girl now. Race, yeah, Molly. You know my trusty dog, Molly. She's been with me the whole time. She's been around the whole time, hasn't she? You've all heard her bark, right, Molly? I think today I'm a, I gave her turkey. I, earlier on, I, I, I had a, uh, I like to, um, I admit, I go to Walmart to get these turkey legs. No, I don't go to Whole Foods. I go to Walmart to get these. They're smoked turkey legs, and they give you two of them in a packet. And Molly just loves them. And we, I, in the morning, I cut, you know, because I told you, I cut the sugar, I cut the carbs. So, so in the morning, I, when I'm eating, I sort of just take little slices of that turkey off the bone and, uh, and give it to Molly and Eli. And Molly just loves it. Yeah, Walmart. Well, I don't know if the shelves... Last time I was in Walmart, because we have a... We're out here in rural New Mexico, so, you know, the closest place is Walmart. When I went through Walmart recently, um, it's right off the 25, you know, it's, you know, not, it's on the, it's on the south of town, way south of town to go into town would take you another 20, 25 minutes from, from where Walmart is. But the Walmart didn't have all the shelves. Like maybe it was because it was Monday or whatever, but it didn't have all the shelves packed. It was like, oh, really? Because usually Walmart to me, it's all the shelves are packed. But there's vast amounts of meat gone and vast amounts of empty space here and there. You know, it wasn't like them. And I wonder if that's going on around the country, if, the, you know, if we're getting ready for these, you know, intentional, planned food shortages. Now, you know that Stalin used food as a weapon, even to the point where people were cannibalizing each other in the streets and there were dead bodies in the streets of Moscow. You, know, you see a picket fence. I've seen these pictures. A picket fence, a sidewalk, and then starving dead lying in the street. You know, maggots eating their faces. Um, he had plenty of food to feed them, but it was all part of breaking the will of the people so that the good could go forth. This is, you know, this is a, exactly Obama, his personality. This is exactly who he is. Exactly who he is. I'm not telling you anything that Michael Savage has, have, hasn't told you. I mean, he's he's one of the commercial broadcasters that's a really good guy, and I can recommend him wholeheartedly to you. As a, you know, he's he's banned in England. What more do you want? And um, he comes at it from a secular perspective. The rest of them, you know, Breitbart.com, they're coming at it from the same place. You know, so, well, that's conservative. And it's like, yeah. Well, um, I uh, am not liberal. I'm not a leftist. Uh, I believe that leftism is the heart of Satanism. So I would say that I wouldn't be a leftist because I wouldn't want to be a Satanist. Uh, But then again, there's plenty of people on the right who are um, in my family were conservative and they were 33 degree Masons and maybe even above that. So that was no, you know, the right was no panacea either. It's just, it's closer to this idea of, even though they're hypocrites, there's more. I was probably exposed to the Bible just as much as occult books because of 
there being a reverence for God in, in the house where I grew up, despite everyone running after the devil. Well, there was an exposure to the Lord. Here's the thing about the Lord, you know, it's hard to understand what his will is for us because you keep going, Lord, Lord, which direction should I go? What should I do? And I thought he was telling me to stop the pod bean thing. And um, focus on sounds. And now I'm thinking he wants an integration. Meaning that I will upload on occasion these things to SoundCloud. And I will try to make my voice, use my voice as I would in any kind of song. In communicating the point which is that the revolution will be televised and it's not a re revolution, it's the same old, same old. And those who give into it will be on a big screen before God. You don't believe me? You think that you get a pass? You think that uh, there's no soul? There's no God? No one's going to judge? When it looks like it's going one way or the other, your, your job is to jump on and ride the train. Not this time, brother. You go down that train track and you go on to death. There is no collective. You come into this world alone. You go out of this world alone. You sweat your fever alone. Your thoughts are your own. And, um, you know, unless you become a hybrid or some other kind of being, that's the way God made you. Yes, I know the hybrids are supposed to be a collective, you know. Well, you know, I saw a collective, like I said, it, it, it church, you could interchange these pastors in e any one of these churches and just interchange them in the ev evangelical world. They were, you know, so I'm not surprised that evangelicals caused Obama to win twice. And it's all their fault. Of course it's their fault. I've been telling you about the evangelical church. Maybe I mentioned Calvary Chapel too much, but that's just, that's not fair because that's just one of many. They're all the same. The Ted Haggard Church in Colorado, the you know the the, the John MacArthur Church, the, this the, I mean, they're all the same. They all have the same vibe, and you can take their pastors and their elders and their people and interchange. Like I said, interchange them, and they're all like cookie cutters. You know, they're all in the same ethos, the same thing, the same clothing, the same. You know, it's like they're little Nazis to begin with. And. Um, and the way they teach the Bible is false because they make people rely on this false uh, hope of, of a rapture and so therefore don't look at politics. And they don't vote. They don't participate in the political process or mention much about it at all except to conform to the society you're in. I saw the same thing with Nietzsche and Shoshu. It was exactly the same thing. In Nietzsche and Shoshu... Um, you know, the Japanese Buddhism. Uh, nam myoho renge kyo. You know, you heard that one? Okay. Nam myoho, you have to have good, good, good. Uh, nam myoho renge kyo. You have to have, mm, ah, just like a martial arts. And, um, oh, nam myoho renge kyo. Yes. <laughs> right? That's it kind of got that feel, that Japanese feel. You know, when you go into the sushi bar, sensei! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and there's that little thing that's happening. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not making a joke. I'm sorry. It's it's an it's an it's an endearment. If if anything, you know, I love Japanese people, so it's like an endearment thing. But I love that. No, I mean, I was into it. The daimoku, you know, you have to be strong, strong daimoku. You know, nam yo ringe kyo. And. Uh, it was the exact same thing. They were all taught to conform. They all there was no criticism of the government whatsoever, which is a which is a basic right of being an American. You know what I'm sitting here doing, criticizing religion and the government both. Um, that's my right as an American, and I'm criticizing the collectivists. I have that right as an American, and I'm upholding the rugged individualist. I have that right as an American, and people tell me, "Well, you're not one of those loners, are you?" I mean, they're going to paint Mel Gibson in, in Braveheart as being a loner. 
it's like, no, I got lots of friends. Um, so not a loner. And, uh, you know, we tend to see things the same way. Sorry. When I find any other like-minded person, I'm just glom onto them. You know, I, I've, I've so welcome any kind of fellowship. It's just that the demonic, I can't explain it. I, I just, I know I'm right. I know I'm saying the truth. And that's really what matters. But the Nietzsche and Shoshu, though, oh my gosh, the organization we called it. They were in Santa Monica, California. And they were kind of, you know, what my, one of my professors in college had taught religion. He, he called them born-again Buddhists because they, they were so much like born-again Christian. I mean, they're so much like evangelicals or Baptists, you know what I mean? They're identical. But you could take these people like cookie cutters and switch them around, and it was the same thing with like the Calvary Chapel, these evangelical churches, the Willow Creek, the what is it down there, the Rick Warren, the, you know, all these kind of different people. Anyway, they could all be interchanged. You know, Rick Warren has the goatee and the exact cl- same thing. They all kind of, you know, the Greg Lurie's, the, who are some of these other people? No, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm, hey, look, you know what? If the shoe fits, you know, you're, you're dividing the body. And, yeah, that's what I was told in Born Again Buddhism, that I was dividing the body of Buddhism by mentioning that, you know, there's some stuff going on. Like, um, <laughs> I wondered if chanting for a parking place was the right thing. Yeah, it was the same. Th- it was identical to evangelicalism. That's all I can tell you. Identical. And I didn't, fit, you know, the idea that you don't talk politics, you lift up the, oh, you do Daimoku for your leaders. They're your leaders. You obey them. Mm. Right? And it was just another voyage. In the, look, look, I predict the evangelical church will be absolutely 100% useless in the time of tyranny in America. They, w- they will do, pull a Romans 13, and they all teach this, I'm telling you. And they will be right there saluting, um, you know, Hitler. They will. They will, they will, they will. They will. They will not be an impediment to um, what the globalists want to do. They will say to their flocks, it's God's will. I just can't wait till they say to their flock, it's God's will, you take the chip. It's okay. Anyone who does take the chip, it's, their will is engaged. So it's no, it's no worry. They were already, God created them to take the chip. So you don't have to go, oh, look how many have been lost. No, they were already slated for that when they were born. The wheat and the tares grow together. Jesus never said the tares become wheat. He said the wheat and the tares grow together. He never said the wheat and the tares are going to switch places. No, the wheat is the wheat and the tares are the tares. Well, why don't you just come over to our side, Z? You know, you put it arguments forward better than any Satanist in the world against organized religion. What we've been trying to do for years, you've done a masterful job at. Why? We're not going to stop you. You know, having people have no confidence in prayer and in faith. and in, I didn't say that. I said have no confidence in organized religion. Have no confidence in man. So not exactly the same message. But I've, I've you know, there is there is that. Um, overall, I don't tell people not to go to church. I just tell people that um, these are the things that happen and this is what I've observed. And, and they can make their own mind up. And if they go there, then they're meant to go there. I'm, I'm not going to stop them. I'm not going to stop anyone from doing anything they want. I'm not going to have Barack Obama over for dinner. If he calls, would you go to the White House? Why, why would he want to talk to me? There's no reason he would want to talk to me whatsoever. We would have nothing in common. There'd be nothing we could talk about. I mean, uh, you know, I like Hawaii. Maybe we could talk about Hawaii. I'm not against going and giving him a word of the Lord, if, should the opportunity arise. I feel that, that my house is too corrupt for him because he has, you know what I mean? See what I mean? 
he like he's either corrupt or I am. Accord, to him, I would be corrupt, and to me, he would be corrupt. But I mean, there you know, there's be an issue. But on the other hand, would would I give him a word from the Lord if the Lord told me? Absolutely. There's Molly. See, there's that good bark. But um, Barack Obama, when you have Sandy one and then Sandy two, Plank one and then Plank two of the Communist Manifesto, the Communist Plan, can you believe it? Can you believe the symmetry of that? Can you believe how many people are didn't even notice? The two names? And that's not the end of it. I mean, there's going to be more and more shootings until there's confiscation, I'm sure. And there will be terrorist attacks. And, you know, it's, it's, it's going to escalate. It's going to roll. And the people that are doubling down, the news media and all their sycophants, are going to be cheering it on all the way to their last day. And when they finally say, oh, my God, no one will hear them. And that's, you know... Sudden destruction. And that's the same judgment God has given. You go, well, why does he let him go on so long? If they've done so many bad things to other people, made so many people suffer, why does God let those people go on to like they're 80 and 90 years old? Why do the Luciferians, in other words, live longer? And I don't know what, I know what you're talking about. I don't know why. Uh, My guess would be that God you know, this is all they're going to get. So God just gives, you know, like the mark of Cain, no one's going to touch them. But when they're dead, then oh my, they're going to pay. All right, there's nothing I can say about it. So we've already covered all this. So with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. God bless you, each and every one of you. I love you. I'm praying for you. And 